If you or a loved one have recently learned that you are metabolically unhealthy, then this video is for you. Welcome back, my name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on today's video. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to approach a carnivore diet if you are metabolically unhealthy. I'll tell you how to assess your metabolic health, tests that you can take along the way, and then some considerations you want to make around a carnivore diet if you're in this situation. Now, before we jump into that list, a quick little disclaimer, this is definitely not medical advice. If you have recently been diagnosed with poor metabolic health, I do recommend that you work one-on-one -on -one with a healthcare practitioner so that they can monitor your labs, blood pressure, all of these different things, especially if you are on any medications, please do continue to have those monitored with your healthcare practitioner. Now, I am a certified nutrition coach as well as a quantum health coach, and I have worked with a lot of people in this situation over the last three years. So hopefully some of the information in this video is enough to really get you started on the right path. So first of all, if you haven't received a formal diagnosis of poor metabolic health, there are some things that you can check off as far as your list goes to know if you're in that category or not. I actually did a full video just last week and I will put it in the information section below and do a little pinned eye up there for you if you wanna check that out. Now, quick little thing just to go down the list, six of those, number one is going to be your waist size. So men, we want this under 40, women, we want it under 35. Number two, your fasting glucose to be under 100. A1C, 5.7 or less. Triglycerides, less than 150. LDL, we want that over a 50 for women, over a 40 for men. And blood pressure, less than 130 over 85. Of course, these measurements are all at the very top end of where you truly want to be. But if you want to have a baseline going into this diet, those are some really great tools that you can use to measure things by. And I do recommend to continuing to test. If you are on any medications currently, that classifies you as already metabolically unhealthy. If you're trying to control your blood pressure, for instance, or your blood sugar using something like metformin, then according to the standards for metabolic health, then you already fall into that category. So again, if you have gone through any of that testing, if you are on any medications, please do work with someone. Now, I will also link in the information section below some of those tests that you can do at home, the A1C, the cholesterol, fasting glucose that I have links and discounts codes for you in case you wanna test those out from the comfort of your home and not necessarily go into a doctor's office. And that full video again will be linked in the information section below if you want more detail on this topic. Now, now that we've gotten through that, how should you approach carnivore if you are metabolically unhealthy? Well, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is something I would tell anybody who is approaching carnivore, and that is to keep it extremely simple. Don't worry about weighing, tracking, or measuring initially. Really look to eat more towards satiety. I do recommend that someone starts out by eating three meals a day and they don't try to fast too quickly, especially if you're in that metabolically unhealthy category. You might have a little bit harder time regulating your blood sugar, especially if you are already diagnosed as diabetic. So making sure that you eat often enough and you eat enough when you first go into the carnivore diet is very, very important. I recommend also that you do make sure you're getting enough fat. I know I said no weighing, tracking, and measuring, but you can do that easily by sticking to fattier cuts of meat, like a chuck roast. If you're just gonna eat ground beef, you can put some butter on top of that. Cook your meats in butter. Make sure that you get enough fat. Something like a ribeye, chuck roast, I already said that. Um, beef ribs, lamb is very fatty. So those are really nice fatty cuts of meat that are gonna be easier for you to stick to and get that ratio of at least 70% fat in your diet and 30% protein. I don't recommend right off if you are metabolically unhealthy trying to go super high protein and low fat. I don't really like that for anyone, but you're already experiencing issues with your blood sugar. And I do see a lot of people I've worked with as well as a lot of people just out there telling their stories that have tried this higher protein 
lower fat approach without carbohydrates and have experienced even worse blood sugar swings. So again, those metabolic health markers that we're really looking at start with your blood sugar. Those are very, very important. So we want to have a diet, a way of eating that's going to support your blood sugar. And doing carnivore again with about 70% fat, 30% protein, eating those fattier cuts of meat, that is really going to help support you in that process. As I just said, you want to start off eating three meals a day. And as you continue on, you might find that you have less hunger, right? So a lot of times people go on to a carnivore diet or a ketogenic diet and they find that they are more satisfied. They don't need to eat three meals a day. A lot of people go down to two meals a day. Some people even one. But here's the caveat here if you're metabolically unhealthy. You likely have issues, especially if your waist circumference fits over that ratio I mentioned in the beginning, you likely have issues with cortisol. And this is something that does not get brought up enough in the keto carnivore low carb world. But when you're constantly skipping breakfast every single day, you are at risk for keeping that cortisol really high. And that's gonna also help you not lose that belly fat as quickly. So when you do start dropping a meal here and there, I recommend dropping dinner. So I always recommend eating breakfast. That is, again, the best way to regulate your blood sugar as well as your cortisol. Then perhaps having a lunch. And then if you want to have dinner, go for it. But if you've started to be less hungry, drop the dinner. Again, most people are going to tell you intermittent fast, just drink coffee, skip the breakfast and don't eat till noon. But I really do see that causing cortisol to be a lot higher as well as blood sugar to be less stable when that is done for long periods of time, especially for people who are metabolically unhealthy. As far as exercise goes, I don't like people to go into hardcore exercise programs. Even if you're metabolically healthy, your body still needs to take time to transition over to this diet. So I really like people getting out and walking as much as possible. I've seen people lose tremendous amounts of weight just from walking. Now, as you get more adapted, you're six weeks, eight weeks, maybe two months into the diet. If you wanna start doing strength training a few times a week, I think that's fabulous. I think it is wonderful to help, again, regulate your blood sugar, and it's just a great thing to add into your lifestyle. But you don't wanna to add too many things at once in the very beginning. So don't force yourself to fast, don't force yourself to skip that meal, and don't force yourself to do a lot of hardcore exercise. Just get your body moving, get in the habit of walking, get in the habit of going outdoors. And speaking of which, my final thing that I wanna talk about that no one ever talks about is the fact that your circadian rhythms are probably off. Your sleep is probably off if you're in this category. So making your priority light, making that a big priority to go outside and see sunrise in the morning with bare eyes, that can actually help lower blood sugar immensely. If you're exposing yourself to blue light, and I'll put lots of studies in the information section below for you guys, that actually elevates your cortisol and elevates your blood sugar. So if you already have issues with blood sugar and you're constantly exposing yourself to unnatural light, if you're not going outside, you're on a computer or a phone screen all the time, especially at night, that is gonna make those blood sugar and cortisol issues even worse. I did do a webinar called Harnessing the Power of the Sun that takes you step-by-step step through your entire day and teaches you how to protect your circadian rhythms as well as boost your metabolism using the sun. Again, I will link that down in the show notes for you guys and in the pinned comment if that is something you're interested in doing along with this diet. So please do pay attention to those circadian rhythms. Make sure that you use blue blockers when appropriate. I'll link the ones that I use down in the information section. That is extremely important. If you're going to be on those computers, phones, or devices, making sure your eyes are protected. And again, going outside, getting as much natural light as you can, that is also going to lower your cortisol lower your stress, and if you can walk barefoot, if you can do grounding, I know it sounds a little hippie, a little woo-woo, I'll put another study down in the show notes for you guys, that actually lowers blood pressure, it actually lowers blood glucose, again, and cortisol, those things that we're working on. And yes, the carnivore diet is going to be very, very helpful and supportive in lowering these metrics for you, 
But if you add these things like grounding, going outside, making sure you're seeing sunrise, blocking artificial light, especially at night, you're going to give yourself a boost and you may see things work a little bit quicker. So I do hope that this video was extremely helpful and informative. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.